browsers. So 90% of our world is in the web and online, and so you're going to be using a browser for, I would guess, the majority of your online time. So best to use a new one, best to use a modern, secure, up-to-date browser. So what's modern and secure? Uh, Internet Explorer is definitely not. Um, it is 25 years old now. Um, Chrome has uh, um, been updated along the way. Um, the way that the reason why Ed, why uh, Internet Explorer is dated is that Edge has replaced it. And if you have a look here, you'll see the icons. Here's the Internet Explorer icon in the top left, and in the bottom right, you'll see the new Edge um, icons. This the the first E was the first Edge icon. It's been updated and replaced by this little swirly wave that sits there. Um, so if you are on the Microsoft platform. Uh, try and make sure that you're only using Internet Explorer for the programs that are um, not compatible with the new browsers and that whenever you're doing normal browsing or purchasing or anything else like that you're using either Edge or something you know modern and secure. Best to go through all the security settings and, and switch them all to as high as you can go. Now when I say as high as you can go when you go and flick some of these settings some sites will start misbehaving. Some of the content won't come through and, and they won't do certain things. Um, where you have that problem, some of the settings say on, off, or ask me every time, and it's probably best to say ask me every time. So when you have pop-ups, for example, on a site, um, rather set it to ask me every time, and on the sites that do have pop-ups and you need them, um, you can then say yes to those and, and then just block all the rest of them as you go. Don't save your passwords into them. The, the password managers that you get um, as a third-party package are probably a better way to go. The browser password stores are getting better, but they're not as safe as the password managers yet. And the other problem is because you've got to hop between different browsers, you would need to store them in multiple places, which then makes you less secure. So the best thing to do is rather have one third-party password manager and just use the plugin for each of the different browsers for that thing. Um, that way around there's only one place that your passwords are. It's not spread out throughout all the different browsers that you may use. And if one of those browsers has a, a an exploit, then the guys have got your passwords. And there again, only use well-known safe browser extensions. We, we tend to enable and plug in a lot of browser extensions from Adobe Acrobat to all sorts of stuff that make our life a little bit easier when we're browsing the web and we can automatically then open PDFs and read them and stuff like that. But again, don't let any site inject browser extensions in there. Don't just load up random browser extensions. Um, they do make your world a whole lot less safe um, because a lot of them tend to bypass some of the default security inside of the browsers. In the browsers, you have a nifty little thing called incognito mode. So when you want to go to a new website, but you don't want them to be able to know who you are or track you, you can open up a new incognito tab or a new incognito window and go to that site. And that's a really handy thing to do when you're going to new sites that you're not sure of. And then always look for the lock on HTTPS. I would be wary of any site that's not using HTTPS and is a, a normal internet-based site. Inside a company, inside the, the slightly more secure walls of a company's network, quite a few of the sites will not have HTTPS because certificates inside of a company are painful and, and sometimes expensive to manage. Um, but any external site should have HTTPS. Um, and if they don't have HTTPS, I would question as to whether you should be doing anything over there. And then it, before you click on any links to take you from one page to another, um, hover over the link with your mouse and have a look in the bottom left-hand corner to see where is it going to take you. If links are hopping you all over the internet and taking you away from the site that you're on, um, just be wary that you know where you're being taken to and that you're happy with that. You'll see at the bottom what I've done is I've, I've so I've included the icons for um, Chrome and for Firefox, two of the the most prevalent browsers on the internet. And Firefox has a focus on um, looking after your privacy. I haven't included Safari because it can only be 
used on Mac, um, and we're mainly dealing with Windows and, and um, you know the corporate world as far as we go. You then have Brave Browser, which is a clone of Chrome, but also with a very strong um, security and privacy focus. Um, and then finally, what I've put at the bottom here is the Tor Browser. Now that's for the for the really paranoid amongst us. Um, this has got a built-in VPN layer, and the built-in VPN layer breaks you out randomly throughout the entire world, and this stops. Um, even your um, internet service provider from seeing where you're going and what you're doing. Um, so if you're James Bond and you want to use a browser, this would be the one that you're using. 